Hey everyone, after successfully assembling the car, ensuring it runs smoothly, and giving it a little exercise, my next step was to check its symmetry and balance. To achieve this, I used two different tools. One is the setup station. It helps to check and adjust the rear and front camber angles, which refer to the tilt of the wheels inward or outward from a vertical. It also checks the front wheel's toe angle, which determines how far the wheels turn in or out from going in a straight line. But I will cover this tool in another video. Today, we're focusing on the second tool, the corner weight scales, which measure the weight distribution across all four wheels. Why is this important? Well, I am too eager to actually see what the measurements are. So let's get these scales out of the box now to get started and leave the thinking for later. I've already labeled the scales for each wheel, front left, front right, rear left, and rear right, but I didn't pair them yet with my phone to be used with the RC Gears app. Each scale connects separately via Bluetooth, and the setup is pretty straightforward. I turn one scale at a time, add it in the app, and then indicate which wheel it corresponds to. There is this default four zeros password that I have to enter to pair each scale. Not sure what's that about, maybe some sort of child proofing, or maybe that is just a peculiarity of the Bluetooth pairing process rather than the scales themselves. With all four scales paired, it's time to measure. Don't forget to attach the battery and everything else so that the car is in the condition in which it will be used. Let's see. Okay. The initial results showed more weight on the back than the front, even with the battery bracket placed forward. In this configuration, it is about 43% on the front and 57% on the back. Interestingly, there is exactly 50-50 distribution between left and right side, but it seems that the left front is a bit heavier than the right front, and the back is reversed. I lifted and adjusted the car to see how it affected the weight distribution. Since there is nothing I can adjust besides the battery position, I decided, for comparison purposes, to move the battery as far back as possible. Then, after some pushing, lifting, tilting, and adjusting, and making sure all springs are settled evenly, making shocks even on both sides, here is the moment of truth to see how much it changed. Still the same 43% front and 57% back. How can that be? So, I decided to shift the battery position all the way to the front again to see maybe I missed something. Okay. Now it makes a little more, very little more sense. It shows that the distribution is 44% on the front and 56% on the back. That is a very insignificant change in my opinion. There is still this slight cross weight imbalance, but I guess that's okay. I then wanted to see if that affect how the driving performance. So I tried to mess around with battery in both positions. The surface is not exactly right, too slippery. And honestly, with my beginner skills, I could not notice any difference. All right, now let's think a little. Intuitively, you'd want the car's weight to be evenly distributed between the left and right sides. Otherwise, the car may not drive straight and won't handle equally well when turning left or right. That's unless you're into dirt oval racing, where uneven weight distribution is exactly what you want. What about front versus rear? Again, intuitively, less weight on the front and more on the back will make the car understeer, making it harder to take turns. On the other hand, if there is too much weight on the front and less on the back, the car will oversteer. The back wheels have less traction. In general, this appears to be a bit of a rabbit hole, and it depends on whether the car is two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. So, I will need to do more research and testing to find out. One more thing, the instructions mentioned calibration of the scales and I decided to give it a try. It gives you this nice warning before you start. In hindsight, I shouldn't have done that and I don't recommend you do it unless you have a problem. I'm pretty sure they come factory calibrated anyway. So here's why this turned out to be a mistake. Once I initiated the calibration on one scale, it reset and then asked for a precise 2000 grams weight, which I didn't have. So I exited the calibration against the app's warning. This made the scale temporarily unusable. So I run to the kitchen and came back with this. By slowly adding water, I made sure that it is pretty close to 2,000 grams, checking the weight on the other three scales, which I did not screw up yet. After that, I used this precise calibration instrument to restore the front left scale. Success, eh? I then decided to calibrate the other three scales as well. My logic was that even if my pan's weight is a little bit off, at least all four scales will be equally off. So there you have it. In the future, I want to find weights that could be securely attached and would affect the weight distribution more significantly than by 1% and do some real testing. But for now, this is it. Here's a little bonus for parents. You more than me, you have way more time. Fine, let's trade then. I'm okay, you have like half the amount of time I do. No, 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 no. You have way more than me. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, 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 there's, we have the same amount. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, that's good.